up, world? Back again. It is the Country Rap Report. And for some reason, I am out of breath. Probably because I was walking up the stairs to my studio. Y'all know what we do here. We give you our opinion, our views, our retrospectives on some of the best and worst country rap videos out in the world. But we also give you exclusive artist interviews up close and personal with some of your favorite artists in the country rap genre. But we also give you something else. And it's called the Music Industry Playbook, AMA. Ask me anything, any damn thing. This is the time we, we forget the entertainment aspect. We forget the entertainment aspect of it. And we concentrate on the educational aspect of it. Okay? Country Rare Report is about entertaining and educating. All right? So whenever we do an AMA, but ask me anything, we're going to attempt to educate you on things you might know. Or also, a lot of you guys will inbox us questions that we will ask. Now, feel free at any time to inbox us your questions. You will remain anonymous. We're not going to say who sent the questions in. That way you ain't got to worry about people knowing that you don't know what you should know. We ain't going to put you on blast. We ain't going to say your name. Okay? So this is an edition or episode of Ask Me Anything with the Country Rap Report. And I didn't tell you guys I'm Big XL. What up, Mr. Deuce Bank? And we finna get into it. But I got a little breaking news. Breaking news, okay. Oh my guy Spank. I'm talking about as I was walking back to the studio, this hit my phone. So if it's not breaking news, then I just got it. And I got this off. VladTV.com. Okay. Gotta, gotta, you know, gotta give respect to where it came from. Okay. You know, and I, I'm gonna say this because I want Spank to give detail on what this means to the industry. Okay. Go oh, shit. Okay. Gotcha. I have no idea what you're about to say. Okay, go ahead. Run it, run it, run it. Universal Music Group. Uh-huh. To wave unrecouped advances. For legacy artists. I don't believe that. You don't believe it? Mm -mm. They just announced, according to reports, Universal Music Group announced a program to select legacy artists to receive their royalties without recouping advanced payments. They finna pay these folks, man. I don't believe it. They finna pay these folks, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Run I'm sorry. DMC. Run DMC if they get their money. No. What, what's, what's the legacy? A legacy artist, Run DMC, LL Cool J, DMX, Tupac. Uh, I, I know about that. Everybody, well, I don't know about E40. Everybody you just mentioned should have recouped by now. Like every, every, they should be, they should be foregoing all royalties, not just whatever in reference to recoup. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That's just sure. a, a media thing for for PR. Like I don't, they ain't gonna turn away no money, bro. This is the industry that. Rapes religiously. You can say the R word. They, I'm, this, they take, uh, they, yeah, you know, we probably just got the yellow flag. And we, we just started. I, I don't, I just don't believe it. This, the industry ain't made like that. It doesn't work like that. And they sure. definitely haven't been, had the reputation of doing this sort of honorable thing. So they want to turn over this good leaf now. You got to show me. Those well, are. I guess you're right, though. The first question an artist would have to ask is, what's a legacy artist? Yeah. Because what if you feel like, what if 5MC is running right up right now to Universal? I don't know if anybody that we got that we've listened in our age is would be considered legacy. I, 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 don't, I don't, I think a legacy art, to me, a legacy artist is a legendary artist that probably has two to three decades worth of work. And well, I don't know if any of these people that we're talking about has that. Run DMC does. LL does. But, I mean, is uh, I don't even know where Run DMC was. Where were they? Def Jam? Priority? They were all over the place. So was uh, LL well, been at Def Jam? Run DMC was Profile. Okay. I, I remember the black and the red on the labels. Yes. Um, profile don't even exist anymore. So I don't know what, what does that mean? Like, for real. And what's a, a, a legacy artist for me would be somebody like, who would be a legacy artist? Louis Armstrong. Um, 
somebody Elvis. Like the somebody from the 60s, 70s ish era that made music. And this is the funny part. After 50 years, the shit's yours anyway, because the copyrights switch over. So most of those people that if it what are you you only giving up these royalties for how long? And then it's gonna revert back to them in in the first place anyway, because you lose rights. I don't I don't this is just PR and this and I'm just farting all of this off the top of my head because you just gave it to me and I was just my first time hearing it and I'm still in disbelief. I don't believe it. You don't believe a label has potential of doing the right thing? Potential? <laughs> Every day, yes. Will they? Absolutely not. That is money off the books they are taking. They, I mean, they'll just figure out some sort of way to take it on another way, but I don't, I don't see it. And this is another thing, another reason why they're probably doing it, because a lot of these legacy artists, quote unquote, are selling their catalogs. They're selling like and getting millions of dollars in advance from catalog holders so they can just live off of that money instead of waiting on it to come in. They're getting a lump sum now. So a lot of those le legacy artists, artists are have been doing that in the last four or five years. Um, they, they're really not interested in residuals. They want money now so they can not think about the residuals. And I, uh, that might be one, way, one reason that they are saying they're going to do that. So you think they're doing it to try to discourage artists from selling their catalog? Well, if they're not going to get it themselves, if Universal isn't, then, then it doesn't help them in that aspect, you know, unless them holding on to it was preventing some of these artists from selling their catalogs. But I, at a certain point, and this is me forward thinking and thinking about the industry, at a certain point, once you get to a certain level, I think an artist should be able to buy back their masters. All right, I, uh, just, I just found the entire article. I'm going to read it. Okay. That was just a paraphrase. According to reports, Universal Music Group announced a program to a program for select legacy artists to receive their royalties without recouping advance payments. It was noted that eligible artists would receive royalties backdated to the beginning of 2022. The company didn't reveal who would be a part of the program or who would qualify. Previously, UMG. Previously, UMG launched a program that mirrors this new one in 2021. The program reportedly gave welfare and health grants to artists and their families with a UMG royalty account. The catch was that Universal had to own the relevant label exclusively. Oh, and and that been the <laughs> Oh my God! See, see, that went the good intent. <laughs> that went. In the past, Warner Music and Sony Music made similar announcements. Last year, Sony Music announced announcement found them saying they would pay out royalties to artists and producers who signed to the company before 2000 and haven't recouped their record advances. I just don't understand. I mean, these are those aren't legacy people that they're talking about from 2021, 2022. Those are people. Well, maybe I think they're probably doing it. This is me thinking. They're probably doing it because of COVID right now or the COVID times. And a lot of those people that signed in that period have not had an opportunity to be able to recoup or get the proper sales, advertising, marketing push for them to be able to get their money back to the label. So the label is like, okay, we're going to offset this. And I think it only, it's probably going to only do this period in time. I would say from 2019 up until now, COVID really started 2020-ish. Um, but yeah, I would probably give it a two to three year window in those artists specifically. I don't, I wouldn't give it to anybody else. I, I wouldn't think that they would even offer that opportunity to anyone else. Truthfully. Well, the whole owning the exclusive rights to your label thing, I don't know about that. They just, they threw a monkey wrench in now. Yeah, I'm sure. That, I knew it was there. All right, man, let's get into this AMA. Today in AMA, we want to discuss, these are not actually questions, but these are, we're going to talk about a couple of things that we've been discussing um, during the review shows. We're going to discuss how to submit, first of all, why it's important to submit your music to record pools and how to submit your music to a record pool. Not just record pools, not just record pools, well, also the people gonna, like yourself. Well, how to submit music in general. Yes, yes. yes. To PDs, bloggers, bloggers, um, anyone, media. Yes. Because record pools are like media. People who are going to utilize your record for marketing and promotion reasons. That's well, this is 
this is the easiest way to do it because you can just send the record pool link and then they'll just download whatever they need from the link instead of having to try to figure out what they need or don't need from there. Uh, instead of you trying to send over. We in the industry hate when you send songs in our inbox. Um, if y'all will load up the entire Gmail and then it'll have your whole damn album in there and then you send it over and that's just like 30 gigs that we got to download. We hate that. Now, we, we don't mind downloading it, but we'd rather download it from a source instead of download it from, our, from your email because some of y'all don't take the proper precautions to protect your equipment and there'll be viruses in your shit. You know, so to protect you and the people that you're sending it to, you're going to need to find a source to be able to upload all of your music to. And that's what we're here to talk about and, and how to properly upload it. Right, but let me let me say this. As an artist, don't submit your entire project. Never. I don't I don't care if you no program director, no blogger, no journalist, no interviewer, no one is trying to pick like people all the time submit me music, whether it's country rap, whether it's over on, you know, riding dirty. Now I'm going to sing you a bunch of songs. You pick which one you like best. I'm not even going to listen. I'm not going to listen. If you put me in there, I'm going to be very honest. If you put me in the position to pick, I'm not going to pick one period. I'm not, I'm not. I just, if I say submit a song, you got to submit whatever you feel like is a good representation for you at that moment. Exactly. It's exactly. called a single. Yeah. It's called, matter of fact, iTunes, Spotify has made it very simple. Most of y'all just release singles. Submit the single. Preferably, submit the artwork with the single. Well, that's another thing. Well, let, let's, what, what, we talk, what do we want to talk about first? Let's talk about Vertigo, our partnership okay. with Vertigo and how they could submit that way. That's probably the simplest and easiest way. Yeah, we have, and I'm going to send over the screenshots. I don't know. It should be on the website right now, but um, we are we have networked with Vertigo. That is V-I-R-D-I-K-O.com. Vertigo has over 10,000 DJs in their database. 10,000? These, these DJs are all over the globe. They're everywhere. They're, they're everywhere music can be played. These guys, DJs, DJs have a resource, and this is what Vertigo is. It's one of those many resources where if we would pay a fee and or if somewhere if we didn't pay a fee we would apply some sort of feedback to the music that we were listening to in the record pool as our service to the fee um so djs rely on record pools for the, the opportunity to get music some then this is newer technology that we're talking about because back in the day we when record, record pools were birthed, we were just coming off of the vinyl stage into the CD stage. Um, the birth in the hip hop genre. The the resource was so that those DJs that wherever they are, whether they played records on the radio or they played records at the club at your favorite spot or some little juke joint, or if they just uh, a, a traveling DJ that played it at parties. Like either way, DJs need music. We don't like going to have to find the music. And the easiest route to go and get music is to find a central location to where all the music is housed. Gone are the days of Napster, old Napster, uh, WinMX, uh, BitTorrents and all that other stuff where we had to pirate the stuff and had to download it online from, from oh, wherever it is out there. And then we're crossing our fingers to make sure it's the right version. We don't have to do any of that. This is what Vertigo has done. We are partnering with Vertigo so that you... Us over here at Country Rap can have a central place for us to have all of our music. This isn't just for the artists, though. This is also for the DJs. So the DJs, and, I'm, and any of you guys out there that know any DJs, you need to make sure you tag them in this one or make sure that you are sending this link to them so they are aware of Vertigo. But since we are going to use this as our house and our uh, way of facilitating the genre and getting more exposure, we need you guys to tell the people that need it. And those are the people that are DJs that play your music, wherever they are. I don't care wherever they are. Make sure that they are knowing of, hey, uh, this new site has a country rap genre specifically. No one else does that. 
No one, nowhere else out there, no other record pool is doing this. No, no one has done this. It's a, it's a specific partnership that we have picked up with Vertigo for us and the genre. You can look on the website. There is a country rap button. The, once you click on the button, it'll be able to populate everything that people have submitted as being country rap. What we are going to do, Vic and I, we might do some a and r for the site to make sure that the stuff that is being submitted is actually country rap. And it's not some people just throwing it in there so they can get easy solicitation uh, and fight the crowd, you know, because I'm not I'm not mad at that. But, you know, if that, that's one way to get your music heard, but we want to make sure that it is genuine. Also, what we are going to do, and this is the part of the segment you probably want to remember. Kevin, the owner of Vertigo, said that we can pick 10 people. We need to pick 10 people that you can submit your music and you can submit your music for free. Yes, there is a cost. But these 10 people that we pick can submit whatever song that they want and we will put together their packs and we will send it over to Vertigo for free so the site can be populated the way that it should be as an example to whoever wants to come in and they start you know, uploading their music. So if you wanna be a part of those people and I'm gonna nominate some, I'm gonna nominate Coca, West 10, Jesse B, um, Shelby K and Church. Church ain't got an album right now. But if it, if Church is getting ready to drop another single, then yes, I would definitely say up Church. Church has an album. I know, but he's finna get ready to drop another album. But we got to pick a single. Like we can't send a whole album. You got to pick a specific single that you want to be played or the DJs to be playing wherever they are. Right now, uh, look at them dudes. Would have probably would have been at the top of that list. Uh, but my Nick. Uh, Next to Red was the latest single that he just dropped. And we're dropping these. The singles are dictated off of whatever you're going to be promoting. And all of us over here promote over here using YouTube as our primary vehicle. So whatever your YouTube video is, you need to be submitting that single to Vertigo. Those, I'm going to get four. I'm, I'm not going to ask Church because I think he's working on some other stuff that he didn't tell us about um, that is probably bigger than this. And then when he gets ready to drop a single, then I'll circle back around and then we'll reach out to him. But definitely Coca, uh, West 10, Jesse B, and Shelby K. You four people need to send me a single or your next single as soon as possible. And what does that single need to look like? We're going to talk about in this uh, entire video. It's not just your MP3 <laughs> and you walking away. No, ma'am or sir, that is not how it, it needs to operate. For those of you folks that don't want to use Vertigo, though, there's a whole bunch of other software that you're going to have to download for you to make sure that your music looks the part. Um, there's 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 a metadata software that you need to get so that whenever you do get a cover, you can implement you can implant your cover into your song so that whenever anybody is playing it, wherever using whatever device, the cover pops up. If you're not doing that, then it is the number one sign that you are an independent and amateur. Um, you don't want to look that way. Not saying that being independent is wrong, but being amateur is definitely wrong. You don't want to look inexperienced and quote unquote ghetto. We can do better than that. Um, if you want the name of that software that I recommend, I will say it later, or you can inbox me, but I'm not going to say it on this podcast because they haven't given me an endorsement and I'm not endorsing their ad. Um, but what I can say, Vertigo does that implementation for you. So whenever you send over your cover and you send up your music that you're supposed to send for each one of those, they import that cover into their metadata. So whenever somebody downloads it, wherever they are, the cover does what it's supposed to, which is pop up whenever the music is playing. Now you can, you know when your metadata is jacked up, when you're playing your song in the car, after you just left a produ uh, producer and it says track one and ain't no cover up on the screen, uh, ain't, ain't no title, it's just whatever the producer typed in there, if he typed anything and just kept it moving. That's improper metadata. Metadata is very important to us in the industry because it is how music is tracked on the surface and under the, under the table. This, the metadata is what how it, it gets you paid whether you know it is getting played somewhere or not. The, the metadata is very crucial to us, but the metadata implementation isn't handled on your side because the record pool is taken care of. So you got, this is a resource that instead of you having to download the software, Vertigo is now doing it for you. But there's various versions that you have to do for you to be able to submit properly. You need a clean version. 
this is the 2022 ver 2022 version of how to upload music. Um, there's a new version on here that it just came about in the last three, four years. You need a clean version, which is no cuss words, no unacceptable words on radio, like pussy, ass. Um, you can't say bitch. Uh, some radios you can. Um, you definitely can't say the N-word. Just you certain words. You can say ass in certain ways, but you can't say, like, give me that ass. So, you know, but you can say... I think you say you can say beat that. No, you can't say beat that ass either. You can say back that ass. You can say, I think you say back that ass. Yeah, you can say back that ass up. But you, when you're using it, that ass, I think it's how you're using it. But you can't say, uh, give me that ass or something like that. Like those, those this word, <laughs> this episode, when I get the yellow for sure. Um, you definitely can't say, um, just, if it's a word that you think that you cannot say, don't put it in there. And when I say don't, and this is where the produ producer has to come in for you. Um, you need to, when I say that you're sending a, a, your regular version and your clean version, your clean version should come from your acapella, which is also you're, you're sending that, and you're sending an instrumental. Those are the four main ones. There's also a DJ version that you can send in, which is the newest one that you put in. The DJ edit is right before your song comes in, you're sending in like two bars of an instrumental. So that the DJ can play that and mix it straight in right before your song actually starts. This is something new. This I learned about it when I was working records um, a couple of years ago, and I was putting out records uh, as a label. But the DJs asked for this specifically for mix shows. I don't know if any of you guys plan on being in the mix, but you should still do it anyway, just for submission sake, because you are dealing with DJs and you don't want DJs to have to make their own DJ version. Those five versions are key. You can, if you have the, the, the masters for all of that or the, the studio session, then once you're pulling out the acapella, now you make the clean version. Do not make your clean version while the beat is playing because as you're muting the cuss word, you also just muted the beat. And now that people, that's another ghetto version. You don't want to do that. That is the backyard, the old school way of doing it. We don't have to do that, especially if you're going to take the time to make these five versions, make the clean version from the acapella uh, and then send it over that way uh, once you're doing it. But uh, you don't have to have an acapella clean, but if you want to, you can add that too. Like you can do a, that, that will be your sixth version, your regular version, clean version, acapella, dirty, acapella, clean, instrumental, and the DJ version. All six of those. And these all six of these would have to go and be submitted through the website. Now, as a DJ, I don't need all six, but just in case I need the instrumental and I want to pop the instrumental off in my mix show, then I will go and download that specifically. Or if I only want the second verse of your song and I want the clean version, I will go and download that. Uh, well, I'll go and download the clean version, but then I'll splice out whatever else I, I need and I don't need. It is a a la carte for the DJs to be able to pick. Like all six of those versions are there for them. And then the beautiful part about Vertigo, the DJs give you feedback. And this is where we probably need to pause because this is the moment in the show where you need to pay really, really close attention. Every DJ that sends you feedback on there and they the DJs have to log in and you have their direct contact. So whenever they say, hey, this is dope. I really like this song. That's a red flag for you. That, that is a good red flag. Put him at the top of your list of contacts, the person to contacts. Um, everybody that gives you... Go, go, ahead. Time you're off for a second. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go also, ahead. what this is something that Vertigo also does, um, and I don't know if this is optional to the artist or not, but sometimes Vertigo, in order for the DJ to download your music, they will have to give feedback first. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I know yes. that from, from doing a stream. Yes. There, you can listen to it, but in order to download it, I think maybe you can request that the DJ give feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how it works. I just know some songs I can download and some songs I have to literally give feedback before I download it because they're really trying, they want me to listen to it, tell what I think of it. And I always thought that was dope, you know, you know, because as a DJ, as a programmer, 
most songs I listen to before I download, unless it's an artist, unless I've already heard the record. Right. See, some I go to Vertigo for two reasons. One, looking for records I've already heard, and also seeing what's new out of there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm the type that's going to see what's new, I'm going to listen anyway. So mm-hmm. getting that feedback from the DJ lets you know two things. What they're saying and that they download. So, you know, I don't know if that's optional for the artist, how that works, but I think as an artist, I would take advantage of that if that's something optional. I would want them to give feedback before they download. They they need, the, the feedback is very, very crucial for later. It's not an immediate thing, but you when you get that feedback, positive or negative, um, but if if you're getting anybody that's like, I'm I'm gonna put this in rotation. Another red flag. You like put them. Anybody that gives you feedback, really, you should put them at the top of your list. And immediately after you get the feedback, you want to reach out to the DJs and thank them for the feedback. Appreciate you, and then ask them if you would like for them to send over a drop. Now, drops are big specialty. Um, I was I never liked drops as a DJ. I was more of a DJ DJ, and I let other folks talk on the mic. I'm not a mic person, um, even though I used to be an MC. But I, I was more into playing the music and didn't really want to think about anything else other than playing the music and what the hell I was going to mix with the next record um, because I didn't have a pre-thought of or practice set. I just mixed on the spot. Um, but I, I, your drops... I don't know if you guys know what drops are. Um, an example of a drop, you know, yo, you know what, yo, yo, this your boy, uh, MCD's nuts coming at you with the uh, uh, Dirty Dozens Volume Three. Uh, y'all are now tuned in to to WCRR. You know, make sure you you listen to us Monday through Friday. while you driving on your way to work or whatever it is. I'm paraphrasing, but you know, something like that. In a nutshell, a drop is an announcement of where the music is being played and yourself. Okay. Um, it's, it's, they call it forward promotion. Okay. Basically, you're saying, because a lot of people are like, hey, what's up? You listen to WCR. And I'll be like, come on, Goofy. <laughs> like, you don't want to know who just said it. I'm right. cool with that. But right. it, it doesn't benefit you. Um, And I tell artists all the time, what they drop, make it as spicy and as in, informative, but quick as possible. Okay. You know, like to me, what up? It's your boy Big XL. You can always check me out at www.ihityourmama.com. And you are listening <laughs> to my brand new single right here on WCRR, the home of country rap. Make it exciting. Right. Make right. don't make it man, what up, man? <laughs> no. You will a, a radio station or a mixed DJ, good drops, they will keep forever. Damn, son. <laughs> yeah. Where'd you get that from? Right. <laughs> you know, or if you're in the Atlanta area, Gabba, Gabba, do it. Do, yeah, yeah. Six o'clock, time street to drop. Six yeah. o'clock at six o'clock time. That man has been playing that same drop for over 20 years. Yeah. I yeah. can guarantee you there have been tons upon tons upon artists who submitted other drops and things on. Yeah, yeah. The one yeah. thing I tell any artist about drops, interact. Matter of fact, if you know a DJ who is, is DJing at a local Chuck E. Cheese, send him a drop. Right. Because he probably ain't got no drop. You're right. And here's somebody, what's up? It's your girl, Jesse B, and you rocking with DJ Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he's <laughs> <going> to- <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese, drop that pepperoni on him, son. Right, right. Hey man, he is going. He is so happy. Let me tell you what artists and this what artists don't realize when we're media, when we're DJs, especially if we haven't hit a certain level. Just doing something for us is like a sign of appreciation. Agreed. Like I never, when I got into the game, I didn't think I would have to ask for drops. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was something. When I was, when I first started managing artists, I would submit the record and say, hey, if you need a drop, I'll let you. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, Vertigo, on their site, every 
every artist page, it has a thing like contact artists for drops. Vertigo, so they recommend yes. artists to do drops. Like, yep. that's what you people... Uh, and Dro- drops I, is a really, really easy way of networking. What? Yep. And I'm telling you, and if it's exciting to the point where they, I tell people, don't sell your song. If they don't tell you to sell your song, don't sell your song. Mm-hmm. Because that dates the drop. Yeah. You don't want you want to drop for the DJ, not yes. for the song. Or the yes. station or the yes. show or yes. the podcast. Like, yep. you know, for real, for real. Like it will get you played forever. Yep. Because if you're an artist, if like me, I got dropped bro to 15 years old because I'm lazy. So I don't like asking people for them. And these still say what I need them to say. Gotcha. So <laughs> man, y'all please. In submitting your records, network with these DJs. Say, is there anything I can do for you? Need any drops? Don't, don't, don't ask. Tell them like, like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the studio on you know Wednesday. Uh, I can shoot you some drops. What you want me to say? You know, something like that. Like, don't ask because a lot of a lot of DJs don't want to ask. Hell, a lot of DJs don't even really ask for nothing anyway. They just play straight and don't do any drops. Or a lot of DJs are just as dumbfounded as the artist and don't know what it is yeah. or how to obtain it. There are a lot of DJs like, man, how they get that? Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> man, how he got them to say his name? And then the other DJ be like, hold on, let me go ask this DJ and let me get, some. I want to drop too. I want that. I want them horns. Where'd you get them horns, bro? Who did that drop? You know, contact, contact Jesse B. She did that drop for me. Yes. Like it's, it's part of networking. All part of networking. And and, and as a DJ, when I hear a DJ do some shit, and I'm like, hold on, I want, I want one. <laughs> you know, immediately I'm like, I want, I want to do the same thing. If I can't copy it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna at least try to figure out where he got it from so I can get one too. It's it's all the same. It's all so we gotta you gotta have that mindset, you know, because if you don't put it out there, and I think in this genre, putting it out there. Has been the issue. Uh, it, it's we 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 are out there. Has been YouTube, and that's it. You know, and then we might throw it up on a distro, and that's it. You know, then then, then we're on to the next project within the next month. Like uh, I think a lot of things are falling through the cracks because of that. Not saying that we can't do that, but where's the advertising and marketing? Where is the networking? Where is the media placement? Uh, right now, if we're the only media, then you have an opportunity because we're going to talk about the video for sure. You know, as long as you make a video, we are going to talk about the video on the podcast. Like, it's up to you now to be able to do the other pieces. You have, since we have started and we are media, we have created other opportunities for you because of our influence. We have now given you an opportunity to reach out to DJs so that now not only your video can be played or at least talked about on our show, your music can be played over here on WCRR on our show. Now your music is stretching outside of our show and going to 10,000 plus DJs around the world and they can play your music wherever they are, how often they want to. That opportunity you need to take a ch- take advantage of. And I don't give a damn if y'all like us or not. You're going to respect the shit. This is an opportunity for the genre to grow. This is an opportunity for all of you to grow and put food in your mouth from the money that is going to get generated from the streams that you are going to get off of the play. The streaming, I'm going to talk about last. Even if I touch it, I'm not even sure if I'm going to touch it in this episode. I might touch it in the next episode because your, your streaming is in reference to your PRO and how you register your music and what type of venues that you're being played in because all venues don't report. Um, if, if it's a juke joint, it's a nine times, ten times out of ten, it ain't report. If it's a VFW or or something, an American Legion, them they ain't reporting shit. The DJ in there got he rented the venue. He ain't trying to pay no more money to report. Like so, it really depends on the type of venue that you're going to be having your music played in, and or where those DJs are playing. But as far as submissions, you need to make sure that you are sending over crystal clear audio. The DJ is not going to mix and master, even though he has the opportunity to splice it and do whatever they can. Don't give that to the DJ. It's Ooh. not their job. It's not Ooh. their job. I hear you. I got to throw, throw this in. Okay. Listen. The DJs do not 
edit your records. No. I repeat, the DJs do not edit your records. So don't be saying you can't just take the cuts or not. No, you can't. I just had to add that because I've been, I've heard that for my entire music radio career. You can't take the cuts or not. No. But well, those are probably artists that did not use the proper submissions um, because they probably just gave you the music. You know, they didn't, they, 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 the music didn't come from a warehouse, like a record pool, which is what Vertigo is. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta use your resources. I would probably like, oh, I, ain't, I ain't downloading nothing. You can go and upload it over here and I get it from there. You know, it's, it's also a safeguard. Like I said, some, a lot of people are using systems with viruses on it. Uh, it's just, I know I, I stopped downloading music a long, long, long time ago when I got a virus. And I hadn't even thought about it since. Like it's it's not even an option for me. I only download my only outside source of downloading is Vertigo unless it was submitted by the artist and per me telling them to submit it. Um gotcha. Gotcha. I don't go no, you know what? I convert files from YouTube because I know that's safe. Going right. from you YouTube to um MP3. Now, this is a question I gotta ask before we actually do wrap this up. I did not realize it was so close. Right. Um do you think a lot of artists don't submit music because they're trying to get the stream? Um, that just hit me while we're sitting here. Like, if, if, if I'm trying to get people to stream my music on iTunes or Spotify, would I not service my record because now they can go download it for free? You stop giving out that, that little tidbit. Um, oh, I shouldn't have said that. No, you should not. <laughs> is, that was actually a question. I know, but this this resource. Okay. After I stopped being a DJ, I still have memberships of record pools just so I can go get the music for the for the free. Um, there are certain DJ coalitions that would let you download specific whole albums. I think I got Lupe's uh, last two albums for free from Core DJs. Um, and I didn't have to pay for it. I just it down everything was legit. What we need to think about it's not about the free. It's this is also about promotions. Um, for every time that your song is played out there in the world, as long as your publishing is set up right, you will get paid. You're supposed to get paid. A lot of these DJs also stream online, or they have uh, online options which are mixed CDs, uh, or they do. Um, some sort of streaming, like yourself. They, they might play something uh, during a live session. Whenever or wherever that is being played, there are mechanisms in place, set in place by the music industry, that whenever it's played, you get paid. It, these DJs know that because they get flagged. They get, they get the, this music is not yours. This belo music belongs to blah, blah, blah. This is a copyright strike. You know, if this music is not being played, which the X amounts or whoever's permission then you need to either show permission or remove the music. This is all the shit that is out there. This is stuff, safeguards that are put in place because music will and can be played somewhere without you not knowing it if you are not taking the proper precautions. You have to be able to do that. And we'll talk about that in the next AMA, not this one because it was running a little, a little long. Don't think about it as free because if you look on Vertigo right now, I can guarantee, and I haven't been on the site in a couple of days, but I can guarantee on the front page, you're going to see some well-known mainstream artists on there. And their single has been submitted mm -hmm. for DJs to play. Mm -hmm. These artists did that so that that song can be available for those DJs to be able to play it wherever it is. Not so much they're negating, oh, I'm missing my streaming options. No, these DJs are doing the work for them. These DJs... These DJs, they don't play Spotify playlists in the club. These DJs are the Spotify playlist. They are playing their set in the club. So the song needs to be coming from somewhere. And all DJs don't play for, pay for music, especially when you have to pay for a record pool. Why well, go and pay for a record pool and have to download you know, Kanye's new, whole album just to get one song off of it? That makes no sense. When the single that he's pushing is already on the record pool. We just get it directly from the record pool. So if church wanted to push, um, look at them dudes or, or people champ, you know, is he going to submit it to the record pool so they can get it or he going to make them go buy the album? Go ahead. Well, I want to show this though. After you log in and create a login, you're looking for that. That's your button. 
that the button that we, that had, we had this created for the entire journal. Country rep. It'll be at the very bottom of your submission. Click that. So we people can know that the, you are here for country rep. You're not just going to jump in the rap because you can look at it on the front page. Half of that is rap. Over half of that is rap. You're going to be buried, fam. And you, that ain't even the, the choir you need to be preaching to. You need to be, there's a whole nother choir here that, waiting on you to talk. Um, and I agree for all the artists who might say, well, why would I put my record there for it can be downloaded when I want people to get the stream? But Frank, you said something very, very important. Allow the DJ to do the work for you. Yes. Okay. If, if you know a person is a DJ or a streamer, like I'm a streamer. Now, when I'm streaming, I understand why people send me the streaming link because they want me to stream the song. Right. And I have no problem streaming your song directly from Spotify or wherever because I know once I finish streaming, it's gone. Right. So you will receive whatever the royalties were because I'm not trying. It's the same way. Um, um, I don't like to shout them out, but I will. No Jumper do a stream. Mm-hmm. At night, well, they for like two hours they stream different artists' music, and they're only streaming it from the iTunes account, the YouTube account, whatever the case may be. They pay. Oh yeah, they charge. It's a hundred bucks a song. I wonder if we should flood the damn song one day and do nothing but church submissions since they want to just get up and walk away. Who gonna pay? For, we gotta pay for it. The church paid for it. The church church is a king's role. He would do that shit just for fun. He probably paid for the <laughs> one that he's upset about. <laughs> or someone paid it because someone submitted a song. And but the thing is, once they hit end, right, it's gone. And that's how they're avoiding the copyright strikes. But you still get paid for it because it's accounted for that X amount of people was watching it a certain time. You know, oh, the, the, the station, they're getting paid right. for the views. They're not getting the strike because it no longer exists. They delete it the moment they end. But the like, the artist and the label is still getting paid for, for the stream that. because right. it's streamed. It right, counted right, right. once it's streamed. Now, right. they're getting paid twice. They're getting paid off the view mm-hmm. and they're getting paid because they don't play no artist song for free. Damn, that's almost payola, but I ain't going to... It is payola. That's modern payola. Sheesh. But the thing is, with the artist, what you don't understand by giving a DJ a record free and allowing them to do the work, a person in the club or the bar, they just heard it. They don't have it. So if I just heard this song in the bar I like and I want to hear it in my car, I got to go download it. I got to go stream it because that's a one-time experience. And I'm only saying this because a lot of artists be on that with DJs. Like, man, you can go download it. For what? Yeah, but I can, if I'm listening to it and I Shazam it and or I, I'm like, Siri, what song is this? You know, and then they tell me whatever it is. My Siri just listen. She listening for the next song. Now I know where to go and find it. But had that DJ not played it, how would they know to go and find you? <laughs> right, that's what you I'm know. saying. A lot of artists don't get it. They want the DJ to download it, just like they want their cousin to download it. Mm-mm. But the DJ is going Mm-mm. to make sure X amount of people hear it, as opposed to your cousin. A lot of times artists come into this and they say, I got to make this money. I want every penny. You cannot get every penny because right. you have to let people do some of the work for you. But they got to understand... It's fair use. The the DJ, you got to understand the reach of the DJ. I I think there might be, because artists, the battle between artists and DJs have always existed. Like we never, we, when I'm speaking from both artists and DJs perspective, as an artist, we never respected the DJs and the DJs never respected the artists. But you got to understand we need each other. Artists, you need the DJ because that's, that DJ might have a venue that he's playing on Thursday for college night, and it's 400 people there. On Friday at a club, and it's 600 people there. That's 1,000. On Saturday, he's playing at a bigger club, and it's another 1,000 people. 2,000 people could have heard your song. Not once. 
but multiple times on them three days. But had you not given the opportunity for the DJ to play that song or good from a record pool, then that song won't be heard. Like, this isn't radio station. Like, radio is definitely about programming, quote unquote. But the stuff that we're hearing in the clubs, the DJs have that control. And if the DJ is giving you feedback saying, hey, I like this, pretty good chance you're going to play it in front of people. You know, and those people might be like, okay, I like this too. Who is that? Okay, this is such and such. Go download it. You just generated revenue. But it all started with your lazy ass being able to upload the music over to the record pool. But you yeah. got to do it. You got to do it first. And you got to do it the right way. We told you how. Just do it. It is a resource for you that you have not been using. I know you have it because it's, uh, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. This genre did not exist on this record pool until we had it created. So and I know it wasn't being done. But this is we are doing it now to help so solidify the legitimacy of this genre. Y'all got to understand that. This is about us getting better. This is about us not looking random, not looking ghetto, not looking uh, unprofessional. We want to, we're trying to bring some level of integrity over here. And it starts with operating within the parameters of how the music industry works. Now, some of the music industry is bullshit. And I'm not saying that you got to do all of that stuff, but it's the, the certain steps that you have to take to be able to get stuff done that part of the legitimacy, this is one of those steps that you have to take. And and Spank keeps showing you the catalog. I'm just going to show y'all the, um, that's what the front page looks like. He's showing y'all the catalog tabs. Yes. But that's the front page. It's vertical. Um, right now, you know, it's basically mobile, global music promotion. Um, right now on the front page, you have just speaking of Spank talking about, you got City Girls on the front page. Mm. Chris Brown's on the front page. Major. Um, Lil TJ is on the front page. Okay. Wiz Khalifa's on the front page. Young and May is on the front page. Major artist. Quando um, Rondo is on the front page. For I real. Be major or not. Is he signed still? But he's, he's still known. Okay, yeah. For yeah. real's on the front page and Yellow Beezy is on the front page. Major, major. Yeah, like you. And th this is the thing. This is how we're going to play on your egos because this is, I know artists. Artists want to be in the same room as those people. Artists want to be in the same place as everybody that you just met, just named. So if you want to be there, then go there. You're getting the same opportunity as they are. You, you As long as you follow the rules and upload everything in the right way, you will get treated fairly. And trust me, when I, as a DJ also, uh, and DJ Trick can probably attest to that because he's, he's probably in the comments. DJs like to be the first to break records, um, especially when it's a good record. Um, now, we are compiling everything on the country rap genre, so we're weeding out some of the filth, the fluff. You guys got to make it is. I can't say that it is our job to do that. You guys got to make sure that you are applying the best production that you can to all of your work when you're submitting to this stuff. Don't, if it's some stuff that you did on Fruity Loops and you recorded it in your mama's closet, it's a pretty good chance you probably shouldn't submit, fam. Uh, not until somebody touches that with a good mix and a master. Now, you definitely need to hit up Pop Off Fresh or Bob Sander for, for those options. Um, but if, if you're not going to do that, you're going to get run the risk of somebody liking it, somebody playing it, now you got ears and eyes on it. And now when they want to get a better version of it, uh, you done lost the masters or you no longer, you can't find the session. Like all of that stuff does happen. And you don't want that to happen. So just put your best foot forward now first. So you don't have to come back and try to reevaluate the wheel. Re, re, it doesn't make sense. Before we go, tell them, tell them the site again. Vertigo.com is V-I-R-D-I-K-O.com. We have our own genre on there. It is for you to upload your singles so that DJs around the planet can play your music wherever they are. It is a resource that you have to participate in. It's not a if. It is a it is a must. All right. Oh, and they also, and I'm gonna say this too. They don't just do record pool stuff, they also do promotions. They do e-blasts, um, they do social media promo, they do all the other stuff. That's, and that's other services. And you can upload your video. Yeah, all of that, all of that. They can do all of that on. The, I'm just, I'm hitting you with the primary, which is the DJ record pool. All the other 
stuff is stuff is, and I vouch for it. I'm a, I I helped this guy get started when he first started. I, I it, that's how long I've been around. Um, after Vic gave me Hip Hop Encounter, Hip Hop Encounter was one of the sponsors of his site. Them and Coast to Coast DJs. I helped both of them promote what they were doing to the masses. Like this is something. This is a history. Um, you need to make sure that you are using these resources because now they they didn't exist then. They exist now. You're here now. Participate. Jump in the moment. Get into it. But these are also things that when people hear country rap, they won't frown. Right. Right. Like, like people, like let's bring some legitimacy to it. Because when people hear like country rap. Right. You know, even with Ryan Upchurch being to the status he is, um, just Friday, I was speaking with some customers at work and I was asking them, did they know who Ryan Upchurch was? And they had on a Nashville sweatshirt. Okay. And it was like, we well, ain't never heard no Ryan and I'm like, that in itself makes me want to push harder because there's no way a person should not have been heard around Up Church, whether you like rap, country rap or not. Right. I can guarantee you these people don't like rap, but they know Lil Wayne. So <laughs> right, right, right. it all just comes, it comes from being everywhere you can, doing drops, submitting the record pools. Um, you know, sometimes I feel like social media it's made people somewhat lazy from some of the traditional things that still work. Because people now mm-hmm. just think, I'm going to make my video, throw it on YouTube, and say I'm, I got a new project dropping on Instagram three times, and I'm done. And repeat that next month. Yeah. 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 You know, and church himself done way more than that. Agreed. There's still a lot of stuff that he, if he done or new to do, he will be bigger. Well, I, I, I think with the help of us, we'll be able to provide or at least network to bring in those opportunities to the entire job. Yes, sir. That's all I got for him, man. I just wanted to um, talk about this partnership with Vertigo. Uh, that's all I got. This was definitely a Vertigo special because it's, it's all about submission and you being able to submit. Now, I don't know if we went over the format. I think he wants MP3s or waves. I'm not, it's one of those two. It's not flack or any of that other stuff, but it's one of those. I think it's MP3s and waves. Okay, okay, cool. All right. Well, those, I've always downloaded MP3s. I've okay. never even been able to download a wave. I only download MP3s. But I think I've seen a button for waves. Now, for those of you that are out there, they're probably going to trip about, you know, it, I don't know what the cost is, but there is a cost. Um, keep in mind that when you're uploading this stuff, there you have to pay server space. Um, and it's not just, the mp3s are small but waves are not uh and some of y'all wave files be thick as hell you know so i've seen wave files about 30 50 megabytes and you can't even put that in a, a, a google gmail you know you got to do that through google drive so if it's that big imagine the amount of space that he has to have to upload all of these because you're not just sending in one version of that 30 to 50 you send it in five or six so, you know so now that uh, 30 to 50 is now 150 to 300 megabytes of data that he has to pay for for his servers to be able to host all of this music. Just don't start tripping on cost. It's about the opportunity, and it's a one-time cost, and it'll be there for life. Yeah. It's not like it's a, I'm going to pay for it, and then the next month, you're going to hit me with another service charge. No, the music is there. I'm pretty sure the music that I upload, I just think about it. The music I uploaded with my artist when I was doing them is probably still on the server. And it's probably the only place you can get it because I took all of that stuff off of the DSPs. So it's the only place you can download the music. And you will become part of the data and they can just type your name in. Yes. And these streams that are on this site are part of the streams that you get paid for. So if you went, went and I, with this one part we didn't talk about, I'm sorry, I'm trying to wrap it up. Um, when you do get ready to promote and send information or you want somebody to download it, you send your Vertigo link. You don't you don't send your Spotify. You don't send your Apple Music. You don't send your Pandora. You send your Vertigo link to these music music industry insiders so they can either play it from the site, or and if they like it, they can download it from the site based on the whatever parameter that you set. If they got to do a comment or like or subscribe or whatever it is that you're trying to do for them to be able to download it, but send this link so and you're able to track it the same way that you would a Bitly link, so you can see who how many listen, how many download, how many impressions you got. You know, and then 
When it's, once they did download it, you can log into the site. You see the precise feedback that they are giving to you. And for those DJs that want to, you know, those drops, they're going to hit you up. You know, so this is a one-stop resource that you need to be taking advantage of. All right. That's all I got, sir. Uh, that was a lot, and that's all I got. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be more that we'll have, but, you know, this is the, the intro to Vertigo that we want to present to you guys and make sure that you guys were, you know, on task to getting legitimate. Now, any questions you guys have, ha any questions you guys have, feel free to drop them in the comments area. Yes. We'll go back yes. and look at them and try to, um, whether we inbox you or answer them in the comments area, but feel free, because I'm sure watching this episode, if you want to take advantage of this opportunity, you will have questions. Or you can DM us if you don't want your comment to be, you know, public. You can yeah, DM us cool and we'll talk about it. That's cool, too. All right, man, let's make this vertical partnership really, really big. Um, this is one of the steps of legitimizing the genre of country rap and getting it noticed by D. There are going to be DJs all across the world when they go to this page. They're going to see that tab and say country rap. And there's yeah. going to be some curious DJs just going to click on, like, what the hell is here? Yeah. So, and and then, if anybody's interested in sending over that first crop that we need to submit to the jump to the, to the website, inbox us. You know, I'm, I'm, we might not say no to everybody, but, you know, if we get bombarded with hundreds of artists sending in whole albums, you know, that's not going to fly. You know, but we'll, we'll, we'll just, just reach out and we'll see what we can do. All right. Ladies and boys and girls, it's your boy, Big XL. It's your dude, Spank. We are the Country Rap Report. Till next episode, man. Y'all be blessed. All right, Peace. Gang, gang. Peace. Gang, gang. Peace.